The only reason speaking English feels difficult is because you're making it feel difficult because of the strategies you use and the mindset you might have. And as someone who had his own struggles and difficulties learning English but never felt like speaking English was difficult, I thought I should address this negativity coming from so many struggling English students and why this is happening. Learning English is a marathon. It's a long journey. But unfortunately, the world we currently live in, where everybody wants to get instant results in five minutes and isn't willing to put in the effort, isn't really set up to support you with that. And if you want to make fast, painless progress with your English fluency, so you never say why speaking English feels difficult, you'll need to navigate through that. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you three different aspects of your English learning that might help you make speaking English feel less difficult. The first one is how successful English learners think and make progress with their English fluency without all the headaches and worry. How you can remember grammar and vocabulary so much better than memorization and translation that just simply don't work. And finally, how you manage your time and you could actually make time for things without always procrastinating on doing something about your English. In this video, I talk a lot about responsibility, how responsibility is a key component of improving. Unfortunately, a lot of people in this day and age want immediate results. They aren't willing to put in the minimum effort and then get upset that they don't have the results. When it comes to something like building your fluency in a second language, like building muscles, losing weight, running a marathon, building a romantic relationship, if you only think about short-term goals, things like, oh, I need to be comfortable now, or I need to have time for things that I need to do right now, and you don't think about the long-term benefits, of the learning process, you're actually making it harder for yourself to learn English and make real progress, which might also be the reason why speaking English feels difficult. Hey English Anna, welcome or welcome back to this channel. My name is Chubby, I'm an English fluency learning and language anxiety coach, and this is a channel for serious English learners who want to learn how to make vocabulary more memorable and how to speak English more freely comfortably and confidently with the help of listening and spoken interaction. So if these are topics that you're interested in and you haven't subscribed yet, you'd like to find out more about these, I've already got a bunch of videos that are going to help you make this process of learning English for fluency much easier. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can get weekly updates on everything I share here about listening, speaking, vocabulary and confidence. We spend our whole life learning that whatever we do is either the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do, something we should do or shouldn't do, and that eventually is what limits a lot of people from making real progress with their English. And this is the first thing we address with anyone who comes into my coaching program, their mindset, basically where their attention is. Now imagine learning to speak English without all the difficulties, the headaches, the complaining, the worrying, because you focus on how you work and how your brain best helps you learn to speak a second language. Studying at school teaches us that we should avoid making mistakes because we get punished for them. We shouldn't ask questions to the teacher or to another person, collaborate with other people because asking for help means we must be stupid. And in this fast-paced modern world, we also learn to avoid anything that feels uncomfortable at all costs because we are so used to feeling comfort. Things like getting food in five minutes, watching funny or short form videos in a matter of seconds. And it's hard for many struggling English students to look at the long-term benefits of making an effort and doing something that might feel a bit uncomfortable right now, but it's going to benefit them and their fluency in the future. The question is never what is right or wrong though, but what actually helps you make progress. Whenever you get stuck with your English, whenever you question whether it's the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do, ask yourself this question. Does this help me make progress with my English goals or hold me back from reaching them. And I used to avoid speaking for years because I was so afraid of people finding out that the chubby they knew, this perfect student, isn't as good at speaking English 
as they thought. But does avoiding mistakes and wanting to speak perfectly actually help you with your goals? What happens if someone keeps avoiding mistakes and they ignore the importance of taking risks as they speak English because they're so afraid of making mistakes and not speaking perfectly. Chances are they're not going to speak and if they don't speak and they hide their mistakes, how are they going to improve their speaking skills without making mistakes? You see where I'm going? The same thing goes for when we forget words, when we don't understand everything that we listen to or read and we don't know the answer to a question. Are we supposed to be like walking Wikipedias who know everything and who know all the words on how we use them and remember every single word we've previously learned? What if we look at forgetting, and I talk about this in this video, as a natural part of learning? I'm also going to be talking about the importance of memory in the next section of the video, but we don't have to feel bad about forgetting things because it's just a normal part of being human. We can't simply remember every single thing that we learn. Part of looking at learning to speak English fluently as a marathon and stop thinking why speaking English feels difficult is accepting that we aren't supercomputers. Sometimes there are going to be expressions we find easier to remember, but there might be phrases and expressions we'll have trouble remembering. So it's not you, it's how your brain works. Of course, the more you see and come across and practice the same vocabulary, the better you'll remember it, which is why reviewing systematically vocabulary so we build a strong foundation of vocabulary with my students is such an integral part of the courses I run in my community and it's also the reason why my students have confidence in using the vocabulary that they learn. Whenever you're stuck with either speaking English, you wonder why speaking English feels difficult, maybe you have trouble remembering vocabulary, understanding fast English speakers, always ask yourself this question. How does this way of thinking help me make progress? This question has helped so many of my students think about their beliefs and then finding a better, more empowering ways to actually make progress with their English. Because empowering thoughts about learning and about yourself, things like, yeah, forgetting words is a normal part of learning, so I shouldn't feel bad about myself or about my progress, is actually going to help you make so much more progress with your English. The second thing I wanted to talk to you about, which could also be why speaking English feels difficult, is how to remember vocabulary the right way. Do you know how your memory works? How do you best remember the things you learn in English? Because it's something no one teaches us. It's funny, but we don't learn in school how we should remember something in the long term, how we should remember vocabulary so that we are always able to access it whenever we have conversations with other people. We only learn short-term memory strategies like memorization. And without the right learning strategies, which is something we put a lot of emphasis on in my courses, a lot of struggling English students risk wasting years using the wrong learning strategies, which doesn't allow them to remember vocabulary much quicker or remember what word to use next. In this video, I mentioned a few more tricks and strategies that I use with my students and that I used myself when I was learning the five languages I speak fluently that will help you remember vocabulary in the long term and help you recall it whenever you need it in a future conversation. But one of the most important things for us to focus on is to always learn words as part of expressions, phrases or sentences. Let's see, for example, this text here. What an average student would do is check these words Look how I used to do it, and this is exactly what I teach to my students in my programs. Focus on the whole phrase. Or if you can't check what's around the word, what the verb goes with it, preposition or adverb, if it's an adjective, it takes almost the same amount of time to learn these expressions as it would to learn individual words. But which do you think will help you think less and speak more fluently so that the words naturally and automatically come to mind whenever you need them. Learning vocabulary always starts at the moment of seeing or hearing the vocabulary. 
So if you want to deepen your active vocabulary knowledge, you need to first make a conscious effort and think about the meaning of that word. If you find a new word, instead of instantly looking it up, think up for a bit what you think it means based on all the information you have around that word in the paragraph and then look it up and then find different ways the word is used. For example, we have this sentence, one day as Mr. Enfield and his friend passed the building, Mr. Enfield pointed to it. So point to something is something you could start thinking about. Even if you don't know what it means, you probably know what point could be as a noun. Now here we see pointed as a verb followed by the preposition to. So when people are walking past a building and somebody points to a building, before checking anything in the dictionary, what do you think that could mean? And once you have a rough idea, and it's okay to make a guess, it's okay to be wrong about your idea, the most important thing for your brain to do is to connect the word with some sort of meaning before you actually check the word in the dictionary. And then you could look up the word in the dictionary and you would see that point to actually means to stretch out your finger or something held in your hand towards somebody or something in order to show somebody where a person or thing is. You can see an example, he pointed to the spot where the house used to stand. If you'd like to remember vocabulary in the long term, this is crucial. Most students naturally focus on the meaning, the story that they are reading or listening to. What I used to do a few times a week, this is something we often do in our classes as well, is to take a short two to five minute snippet of a podcast or an interview or a video. It could be a few paragraphs of an article or a page in a book and really dig deep into the vocabulary, the grammar structures and how the language is used in those sentences. And then I was making sure that I was engaging with the vocabulary. So my brain makes those deep connections so that I can always access those connections whenever I need the vocabulary in a conversation. And if you need some more effective ways to learn vocabulary and remember vocabulary in the long term, make sure you check out this video. So you won't have problems forgetting vocabulary too often. If you wanna get an insight into my method and the reason why my students make a lot of progress with their English and are able to speak English with a wide range of grammar and vocabulary because we focus so much on effective vocabulary learning, Make sure you sign up for my free webinar, which I call Activate Your English and find out everything about how to learn vocabulary in a way that helps you use more vocabulary whenever you speak. So you don't have trouble looking for the perfect word to use next whenever you forget words as you're having conversations in English. The link is in the description below. And another reason speaking English feels difficult is that it's not your habit. Anything that becomes your habit once that's running on autopilot so you don't procrastinate and feel like you always have to make time for it, is always easier to develop. I made an entire video on habits, but what's important for us to remember is that habits help us save energy and time. And the way you spend your 24 hours today, or on an average day, will eventually determine how fast you get fluent in English. If it's been a while, take a deep look at what you do in your 24 hours. Look at how often you open up your phone, see how you could reduce that to just a few times of opening it so that you save a lot of your energy and attention. How much time you spend overthinking, not doing something because of all the thoughts you have about speaking, reviewing vocabulary, listening or anything else that you don't feel like doing. Think of replacing those minutes or hours by actually doing something that moves the needle with your English fluency. And it's not about spending three to five hours poring over a book or watching movies on end or chatting with friends for hours at the weekend. It's more about scattering short periods of practice. And it could be 10 minutes to 30 minutes, sometimes an hour if you have that much time where your brain is primed into thinking in English multiple times a day. For example, I used to start my day with vocabulary reviewing. In the first hour of your day, where your subconscious mind, which is responsible for things like language and habits, 
is really, really active. I spend about 10 minutes reviewing vocabulary I recently learned and also vocabulary that I knew I couldn't remember so well. When something becomes a habit, building a habit is the hard part. Maintaining it is already the easy part because once you have a habit running, it is going to run on autopilot. But if you go back to that video where I talk about how to build habits, you will find how it's simply just all about focusing on building that one habit and not trying to build five habits at the same time, but focusing all your energy and attention on building that one habit into your daily routine. And as a result, you'll find it easier to actually make time for speaking. And once you stay consistent with it and keep it 1% more challenging, eventually you're going to make progress in the long term. If you have any questions about the three things I talked about, whether it's mindset, your memory or habits, make sure you leave them in the comments below. I'd love to help you. I create these videos to share with you my experience learning English and also the experience my students have that really help them focus on their fluency skills and learn to speak English fluently and confidently with all the tools they have available. Try to pick and improve at least one of the three aspects we talked about today so that you have a different view over what learning to speak English feels like and so you stop wondering why speaking English feels difficult because it really doesn't have to be and that's my mission to help you understand. Now thank you so much for watching this through and I hope to see you in a future video. Have a lovely rest of your day.